how to use Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Loop together. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can use Microsoft Teams and Loop together. So we all have seen how amazing the capabilities of Microsoft Loop are. And if you can enhance them by using them within Teams, what more could you ask for? So if you want to use Microsoft Loop within Teams, there's a slight workaround. I'm not going to say that this is probably the best integration ever. However, it is a pretty decent way to integrate Loop into Microsoft Teams, but it could be optimized and made a bit better. So starting off, firstly, you're going to open up your Microsoft Teams channel where you want to add Microsoft Loop. So just add or open up your channel or create a new one. Once you do that, you're going to build a new, you know, team channel. I'm just going to be adding loop to my general channel on my team. Now, once I do that, I'm going to click on the plus icon in my tabs. So we're going to click on this. And from here, you're going to select loop. Once you click on loop, a dialog box is going to open up on top and you will see you have the ability to post to the channel about this tab. This allows you to notify everyone that you have created a Microsoft Loop workspace for you guys to work together in this particular team. So we're going to click on save and it's going to set up our Loop workspace. Now you're going to create your Loop workspace. So you're going to rename this from general to whatever you want. I'm going to be calling this Durden and I'm going to be using a cute emoticon for this. I like this one. Then you can click on add content. I'm just going to click on create. And once you click on create, this will create a shared workspace with everyone within this particular Microsoft team. So everyone in my Durden team will be able to use and access this Microsoft Loop space. So we're going to wait for this to be created. And once it has been created, this is what it's going to look like. So on top, you will see you have a sorted hierarchy of pages. Starting off, you can take your first page and you can honestly just change this into usually a basic page for the project. So this can include the project name. Let's say this is going to be Durden, SOPs or overview or brief, whatever you might want to call it. Then you can get started with typing. Now you can click on add page and then click on page over here and this will create a secondary page. Whenever people open up this loop, they can expand the tab completely to view the entire loop space and they will be able to access the tabs like this. So if they want to scroll between pages, they can just click on the top like so. Now, what can you include in these pages and notes? Well, starting off, if you do a slash, you can include subpages, tables, checklists, bulleted lists, numbers, dates, callouts, code, mermaid, math equations, content, dividers, different text styles. And then here is what I like. So because you are using Microsoft Loop, you have the capabilities of Loop. This includes Kanban boards, progress trackers, voting tables, and task lists. So to get started, what I like to do, I'm going to remove this task list. I want to first show you guys a few templates. So if you use the project brief template like this, you will see this is what this template looks like. This has project deliverables as well as team members, but I'm going to remove this and I'll show you guys how to add this by yourself. I'm going to keep this page as my project brief and then I'm going to go into my second page and this is going to be called task tracker. And now I'm going to do a forward slash and then scroll down. Once I do scroll down, I'm going to add a Kanban board. Once I have done that, I'm going to expand my view. We can collapse it as well. And then I'm going to change the to do into tasks and then I'm going to name them either done. I'm actually going to be clicking on delete group to delete this group tasks done and then I'm going to select one option which is called stuck and then I'm going to change the color on this which it is not giving me the ability to do so. Now from here we can start adding our tasks. I'm going to delete this basic card and I'm going to rename this to task tracker. Now I'm going to click on whatever needs to be done. So let's say 
that we need to create add set then you can add the team member that is supposed to do this then you can also select a date like so now you can view the details of this as well so you can open it up and then you can add any sub items then you can add any notes that you have and you can add fields as well this includes text-based fields numbers dates person voting and then labels so you can create your own labels and add your own label groups, including things such as priority. So by default, you have progress priority added. I'm going to go into field seven, it says field seven. I'm going to change this to say priority and we're going to add option one. It's going to be low, medium, high. So you can add whatever option you want. I'm going to label this as high like this. So on and so forth, your team can add as many cards as they are working on. This allows you to manage your project within your team without having to subscribe to a brand new tool. From there, you can move forward and build different pages for different purposes. You can view the shared locations as well as copy the loop components. Then you can also share the workspace, page link, and loop components. You can lock a page if you do not want other team members to be able to change or edit this. And you can even view the version history. Moving forward, we can click on create new page and you can add a team decision page. So this allows you to compare ideas, steps, as well as vote on different things. So from here, if I add a idea section, I can add a voting section, final decision. So over here, I'm going to add voting, vote for the best idea. Then I'm gonna do a forward slash. And we're going to scroll and we're going to open up a voting table like this and we can add the votes only instead of adding the pros and cons list. You guys can see votes have been added in the compare ideas section as well. You don't have to necessarily build it separately, but if you want it to go step by step, you can add that as well, like so. And just like that, people can vote for each idea that they agree on. And this makes it really helpful for you to be able to manage teams, especially if you have a hybrid work environment on, or your team is internationally located. So you have different time zones that they might be working on. This ensures that everything stays cohesive within your team. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to get started with using Microsoft Loop within Microsoft Teams. And you can always use some of their page templates for easy guidelines on how to add information that is going to be integrated into Loop. If you enjoyed this video, I would recommend that you please leave a like. And if you have any questions regarding this video, regarding any other video, or regarding any social platform, then you can definitely ask me in the comments down below. And I will try to answer as soon as possible because that is the point of our YouTube channel. I want to show you guys on how to glide through these platforms and how to easily navigate and fulfill the purposes that you want to do with these social platforms. So make sure to tell me if you find anything missing. So that was it for today. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.